I'll show you how to open up these Dyson batteries. These go on the um, handheld vacuums. Uh, this one here, I've had it open before, but it's really difficult to open it. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then how to diagnose this flashing red issue where you press the button on it and you get a flashing red light and that's all it'll do. And these batteries have a small onboard computer that senses any battery faults and will stop the battery from working or charging uh, whenever it has any out of balance situation. You'll get this flashing red light as a result. And for the most part, it's a dead battery. And you can go on Amazon and replace the whole thing. Or if you're handy with electronics, you can open it up like I'm going to do here and take a look at those cells and see if there's any major problems with them. To open this up, you're going to need to remove two screws from the vacuum itself. These two small um, ones here, they use a regular screwdriver tip. But you're also going to need a star uh, uh, screwdriver tip that you're going to use to take out this other screw. And if you get one of these kits, these are very cheap. It's like seven or eight bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description where you could find one. But these kind of kits are good for a little bit of surgery on electronics. So very small bit goes in here. Very small screw comes out right here. And don't forget this one. If you don't undo this one screw, then all your effort on this battery is going to be lost because it won't come apart. And then you're going to find when we get inside there, there's one more screw that also uses the same star bit. So put that aside. Don't need that yet. So what I'm going to use to open this up is I'm going to need to pry it open. There's a tab behind each of these little black lines that I drew with marker uh, on here. Looks like one of them came off. There's one there, one here. There's one along here. One along here. So all the way around, there's these little plastic tabs where there's a hole and then there's a, a small piece of extruding plastic that'll lock into that hole. And we're going to need to take our a pry bar of some sorts. I'm using a very small tip screwdriver. You can see it compared to my finger here. It's very small. I'm going to get underneath this edge and then I'm going to take something simple like a, you could use a credit card maybe or some tie wraps, piece of plastic just to get on top of that little tab underneath here so that it can't catch into the hole again. Then when I get them all the way around, I can pull the battery off and that'll work. And this is if you want to save the battery. If you save the battery casing um, with it to be able to lock and securely like it is now. Another way to do it is you could wedge in a razor blade here and cut those tabs from the inside off all the way around. And then it would slide off as well, but you probably wouldn't be able to lock it back in like I've got here. You'd have to glue it or tape it back or something. So I found that opening up with a pry bar like this little screwdriver works pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just wedge it under this plastic, and it's very tight fit from the factory, so you're going to have to really work it to get your screwdriver in there. Then I'm just taking a tie wrap, and I'm sticking it to cover up that tab, and then pull my screwdriver out. So I got one there ready to go. Having these uh, tie wraps that are very thin in here, too, is a good idea because as you start to add them in, if you put maybe multiple screwdrivers and jammed them in there, be kind of hard because it takes up space and it starts to stretch the overall housing. And then it's it's hard to get these next ones opened up uh, because it's too, it's too spread open, right? So I'm just going to do the same thing. Just keep wedging this uh, plastic strips in there just like this as far as you can get it across that little tab. And like I said, they don't want to go in here. This is all very tight fit. I think Dyson um, did not plan on these batteries being opened, but as much as they break, there's a lot of people needing to open them because these batteries fail a lot. And it's really, oftentimes it's not the cells, it's the battery uh, management system. They call it a BMS, which is the little circuit board I'm going to show you that controls the battery and that and that little circuit board has a um a device on it called a I think it's a PMB that you can order it to replace replace the um the whole thing. Boy, this one doesn't want to go in there. Uh <clears throat> and you can replace the whole little board and then if your battery cells are still good then you're good. You still got a good battery. Let's try a different one. Yeah, it's hanging up on there somewhere. Got it in there a little bit. We'll go with that. I 
Get the next one here on the top. Yeah, I feel like on that other one we got to, we got to pass the tab there. That one went in easy. Now don't forget that screw there. That first thing we did. You're gonna need that screw out for this to work. One more in there, and here's the last one. And I can see it's already starting to come out. So now you can now that you've got those tabs pried up all the way around, you can start to work this here, and there we go. Um, usually doesn't come that easy. Um, this one's been open before, and that's probably why that popped right off. But as you can see on this part here, there is a tab here and here as well, but you can't really jam anything in there to help with that. But what you can do is as you're pulling back on this. Um, you can take your screwdriver and you can pry on each side. And that's why I had these little stubbies out because the wider blade on them, I could put it in here and I could pry them out and that'll make that come off. So now that you got this piece off, um, part of this, uh, which I didn't expect that to jump out as fast as it did, um, is a, uh, a little button here that's for diagnostic testing. Uh, so you can push that button even when the battery is not connected to the unit and see some feedback from those lights here. And um, uh, so that button ties in with this little thing here. There's a white, very small, white depressible button here, and that's what turns on your red lights. Okay. Um, that second bolt that I was talking about is right in the center there. Again, it uses that little star bit. And the star bit on my little kit says number 8H, whatever that means, but it's the number 8 one. And then you're going to pull that piece out. And then when I've got that out, I can slide the whole battery pack out of the big housing side. Okay, so I've got that whole big housing piece. And then what you can see here is you've got four wires coming off, two that connect to the, to the testing circuit there that you can test there's a piece of plastic here that comes up this is basically to keep to to reflect this uh, led light to both sides for the for the red blinking lights um and then here's your board here's your your uh bms your battery management system and what you can see on here is it's got six cells one two three four five six and these are these are pretty high amperage battery pack uh cells because this, as you know, this vacuum uses a lot of power. And then they've put this um, board down, and then they've covered it with a bunch of uh, some waxy protectant here to cover it. Um, it's attached with solder on uh, six spots here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then there's a seventh right in here. This, these big tabs here in here these are like your main power so you should see the um uh these are about four volts each so 24 volts total capacity you should see around 24 volts if you do a test from here to here and then individually you should see about four volts on each of the batteries going through now if one of these cells is really out of whack this board will detect that and it'll shut off the circuit so that nothing's going to work through here um, you push the trigger, nothing's going to happen. And that's what's been going on with this particular battery. I'm going to go ahead and put a um, multimeter on this. And we'll just see how these cells look. All right, so we got triple zeros here now. I'll go ahead and test the first cell. And we come out right at four. Okay, second cell. Right at four. Number three, just a little bit low, but it's probably acceptable. Here's the fourth one, similar to that last one. Fifth one, this one's pretty low, like a 3.39. And then we're back up to a 4.0, so. The system might be detecting a fault with this cell here. I'm not sure exactly what the parameters are. I'll have to dig into that to find that a little bit uh, more. Um, if I do a test from start to finish, 
what I'm going to get is you're going to see a quick flash that's going to take me up to about 20 volts. Then it's going to go to go to zero here because the board's going to take over and it's going to close that circuit. There, you said 16. 11 because what it's doing is it's pulling seeing if there's a load being pulled and then because it has this fault then it's interrupting so we're barely seeing what the charge is for the whole uh series of batteries here um and then it's kicking it off so that tells me either I've got an issue with this particular cell being at 3.39, that it's that it's too low uh, and out of sync with the other ones. So the the board is telling me, hey, this is there's a fault in here. I'm not going to run, or it's the board itself that's failed. And like I said, replacing this it's a bit of a pain. Uh, you've got to pull off all these soldering points. You got to remove it. Order your new replacement board. You can get these on eBay for about 12 bucks delivered. They come directly out of China. So you're thinking uh, maybe 28, uh, you know, 42 days shipping, um, four or five weeks, six weeks, uh, and they'll they'll send it to your door. But it's like 12 bucks, very cheap for this this whole board to replace. Then you got to so solder it back on, um, and then hope that it wasn't just being fussy about one of the cells. So um, in this situation here, I'm I'm not going to deal with all that. I'm probably going to replace this battery. Um, I don't know if that fault is just with this one cell. Um, or with this, if all the cells r r came right in at four, then I would I would assume the batteries are good, and I would just replace the board. Um, but it's, there's no telling. These things are prone to failure. Uh, there's a ton of videos and uh, FAQs online about the problem. Uh, Dyson needs to re-engineer this thing somehow because as high-powered and compact as they are, they don't last. So that's not a good thing if they don't last. But hey, I hope this video uh, helped you learn how to take apart this battery, uh, very tight fitting battery. Um, any of the parts that I used, I'll put inside the uh, description of the video, as well as replacement parts where you can find them on Amazon. And uh, I hope this helped you out. And if you would, please give the video a thumbs up if it helped you. That'll help other people find it as well. Have a great day.